For good paralleling performance, symmetry is key. First, symmetry for the model is required to keep the impedances and currents balanced between the left and right hand sides of the module. So, as you see in the picture, the left and right hand side layouts are mirror images, just like the wings of a butterfly. Second, all modules should have a similar layout to keep the current loop impedances matched. For this particular design, the final inductance per module was less than 18 nanohenries, including module, printed circuit board layout, and its bus capacitors. This makes an effective inductance of less than 5 nanohenries for the complete 1.5 milliohm switch. To be able to evaluate the current sharing, it is required to measure the drain or source current. This can be achieved by tracking the PCB and having holes in the board to enable the insertion of Rogowski coils. Here you can see the measurement of the lower MOSFET source current with the Rogowski coil looped around a PCB trace. Let's now talk about static current sharing for a single module and then between all four modules. The module is divided into two symmetrical halves and the power layout is tracked as a mirror image down a vertical center line. Measuring the output load current in the module left and right halves shows very good current sharing. The next step is to compare static current sharing between all four modules. With four modules having an RDS on of plus minus 2.5% at 1000 amp total current switched during a double pulse test, the static current sharing was better than plus minus 3%. In this double pulse test, you can see that during the first off pulse, synchronous rectification was used, and during the period of off pulse, no synchronous rectification was used. The current sharing is worse when the MOSFET is not gated on. So, it is recommended that synchronous rectification be used. How about dynamic current sharing? The following turn on and off waveforms showed very good dynamic current sharing with no oscillations, even at high bus voltage and minimum gate resistor values. Here, testing was performed at different temperatures, bus voltages, and gate resistor values, and they all exhibited similar performance. Now, since testing a couple of sets of four modules is not enough for a high volume product, we will explain the details of the Monte Carlo method that is used to analyze a larger sample set. Here we can see how Monte Carlo analysis is used. This involves six steps. In this example, three modules are selected at random. These are from a population with parameters according to the statistical production data with a normalized distribution of variation in RDS on and switching loss. This process is named after the famous casino due to the randomized selection. From these parameters, the current sharing and junction temperature can be calculated using an iterative process as shown in steps three to five. This sequence can be repeated here for 50,000 sets of three modules and then the normal distribution of junction temperatures can be plotted. The result is a plot of the normal distribution of junction temperatures. Here the statistical junction temperatures show a plus minus 7 degrees Celsius variation at three sigma points under high load conditions. So, to conclude, remember that there is no magic to paralleling cool SIC MOSFET devices, and this enables high current solutions for applications like UPS, auxiliary inverters, or EV charging. As the main key takeaway, always keep in mind the three rules of paralleling. Symmetry, symmetry, and symmetry. The first part of this video focused on motivation and gate driver design. Check it out if you haven't already done so. If you need additional information on paralleling Infineon SIC MOSFET Easy modules, just have a look at our product page at infineon.com easy, or you can always contact your local application engineer. And don't forget to subscribe to Infineon's newsletter for engineers. Hope you'll find it useful.